House votes 251 to 170 adopting bipartisan provision that would require President Trump to get approval from Congress before striking Iran. Here's a summary of the article. Breaking, July 12, 2019, Washington, the House voted Friday to curb President Trump's ability to strike Iran militarily on Friday, adopting a bipartisan provision that would require the President to get Congress's approval before authorizing military force against Tehran. The 251 to 170 vote reflects lawmakers' growing desire to take back long ceded authority over matters of war and peace from the executive branch, a reclamation legislators contend has grown increasingly urgent amid escalating tensions with Iran. Mr. Trump said last month he believes he does not need congressional approval to strike Iran. If my war-hungry colleagues, some of whom have already suggested we invade Venezuela and North Korea and probably a few other countries before lunchtime tomorrow, if they're so certain of their case against Iran, Mr. Gates said, let them bring their authorization to use military force against Iran to this very floor. Let them make the case to Congress and the American people. The administration's measured response to Iran shoot down of our U.S. military asset in international airspace shows the president is not looking for a war with Iran, Mr. McCall said, referring to the downing of an American drone. A bipartisan group of lawmakers led by Senator Tom Udall, Democrat of New Mexico, attempted to attach a similar measure to the Senate's version of the defense policy bill last month, but the amendment failed 50 to 40. If the larger defense bill clears the House on Friday, it must still be reconciled with a Senate version that is considerably less confrontational with the Trump administration. The House version of the bill allocates $733 billion in military spending while the Senate version allocates $750 billion, meeting the figure the White House requested. This post received a score of 79,098, with an upvote ratio of 90%. Here are the top comments in response to this article. The Senate exists, so don't get excited. I stopped reading after House. At least this one finally said the House. Instead of saying, Dems vote. It's the fucking House that votes. Did Cuddy vote? Wilson. Or just House? Cutthroat bitch? Did she get a vote? She took 13's vote. Tob gets a half vote. Cutner gets none. Thanks, Obama. No, really, he quit the show to go work for the Obama administration. McConnell won't even bring it up for a vote. McConnell, we don't need to vote on it because the president wouldn't do that. President does it. McConnell, we didn't need to vote on it because the president can do it if he wants. More succinctly. McConnell, less than evil stuff greater than. President, less than stupid stuff greater than. McConnell, less than more evil stuff greater than. Repeat for four years or until democracy is completely gone. And most important. Together, stupid evil stuff. Stupid evil corporate stuff. Mitch McConnell, no. Can someone ELI 5 why the Senate Majority Leader can just block House bills from being voted on? Seems pretty fucked up to run our government this way. He decides what they vote on. Which means he also decides what they don't vote on. I had a teacher in high school once argue that the Senate Leader was more powerful than the President. At the time I thought he was ridiculous. Now though. Speaking from a con law perspective, Congress in its entirety is supposed to be more powerful than the President. The executive was conceived of as the weakest of the three branches because our founding fathers were far more scared of a single man in power than anything else. It's a fucking travesty that nobody seems to recognize this anymore, and it's a sign of how weak our republic has become that Congress has continued shifting more and more of its responsibilities onto the presidency. Honestly all three branches have expanded beyond the scope of their intended purpose. However, the judiciary and the executive have just seemed to absorb a lot of powers from the weakened legislative branch. The Constitution was also written for an entirely different economy. Different economy and completely different technology. What the government has over what the average citizen has in terms of information technology and weapons systems is completely mismatched compared to 250 years ago. Exactly. I've always said having my own surface to aim missile pad on the back 40 would keep the tyrants at bay. It was part of the system of checks and balances, the people held military power over the government. Obviously those in charge didn't like that constraint, accountability, so the Second Amendment has been diminished greatly since 1776. It's hard to imagine private ownership of nuclear submarines, aircraft carriers, or SAM sites, but I suppose that's more cultural than anything. I bet they'd be quite a bit cheaper if that was an option though. 
Lockheed Martin would make fighter aircraft affordable if they could sell them by the thousands for recreational duck hunting. This video was automatically created by Reddit to speech. The article and comments in this video were selected from Reddit according to their upvotes, and any paraphrasing was performed by smmry.com, without any human intervention.